of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which uh, he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Dotham, as Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O heavens. I have known that children and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib, but Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. Our sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evil doers, children that are corrupters, they have forsaken the Lord, they have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Why should you be stricken any more? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick, and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot, even under the head, there is no soundness in it but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Your country is desolate, your cities are burned with fire, your land strangers devour it in your presence. And it is desolate, as overflowed by strangers. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Except the Lord of hosts had left us, uh, unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs, or of he goats. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand, to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me, and new moons, sorry, the new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me, I am weary to hear, uh, bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make you clean, put a away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes, cease to do evil. Learn to do well, seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. How is a faithful city become an harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. Thy silver is become dross, thy wine mixed with water. Thy princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loveth gifts and followeth after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither doth the cause of the widow come unto them. Therefore saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, Ah, I will cease, I will ease me of mine adversaries and avenge me of mine enemies. And I will turn my hand upon thee, and uh, purely purge away thy dross, and take away thy tin. And I will restore thy uh, judges as at the first, and thy counsellors as at the beginning. 
Afterward thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion shall be uh, redeemed with judgment, and her converts with righteousness. And the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together, and they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. For they shall be ashamed of the oaks which ye have desired, and ye shall be uh, confounded for the gardens that ye have chosen. For ye shall be as an oak whose leaf fadeth, and as a garden that hath no water, and the strong shall be as tow, and the maker of it as spark, and they shall both burn together, and none shall quench them. Isaiah chapter 2, the word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow uh, unto it. And many people shall uh, go and say, Come ye. And let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God, of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come ye, and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Therefore thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they have uh, they be replenished from the, the east, and are soothsayers like the Philistines. In other words, they go into witchcraft, demonism, and those sorts of things. Uh, and they please themselves in the children of strangers. Their land also is full of silver and gold, neither is there any end of their treasure. Their land is also full of horses, neither is there any end of their chariots. Their land also is full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, that which their own fingers have made. Oh, how this applies to the land of Oz. We are just full here of idols, and we worship the work of our own hands, that which their own, our own fingers have made. And be, because of this, you and I are in trouble. We're in big trouble because we're in trouble with God, because of our sins that have not been forgiven. But I'm here to tell you this morning that your sins can be forgiven, and that's exactly what God wants. For each and every one of us, that our sins would be washed away in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. And the mean man boweth down, and the great man humbleth himself, therefore forgive them not. Enter into the rock, and hide thee in the dust, for fear of the Lord, and for the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon every one that is proud and lofty, and upon every one that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low, and upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan and upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up, and upon every high tower, and upon every fence wall, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all pleasant pictures, and the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall be made low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. And the idols he shall utterly abolish, and they shall go into the holes of the rocks, and into the caves of the earth, for fear of the Lord, and for the glory of his majesty, when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. 
In the, that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they may, uh, made each one for himself to worship, to the moles and to the bats, to go into the cliffs of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks, for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty, when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. Cease ye from man, whose breath is in his nostrils, for wherein is he, is he to be accounted of? You and I are just temporary. We're here just on probation, as it were. You and I have to realize the great need that we have of forgiveness for our sins. God wants to forgive us of all of our sins, but he cannot do that unless we believe on his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. What are you, one that has been saved? Have you, is your soul saved? Are you on your way to heaven? Or are you still on the broad road that leads down to hell and destruction? God wants you to be in heaven. We cannot be in heaven apart from the Lord Jesus Christ and his once for all sacrifice upon the cross of Calvary. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried. But praise God, the third day he rose again according to the scripture. Lord, is your soul saved? As you sit there in your car, are you headed for heaven? Or are you headed down to hell? God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I wonder, is your soul saved? Are you on your way to heaven through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ? Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Isaiah 3, for behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Ju Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread, and the whole stay of water, the mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient, the captain of fifty and the honorable man and the counsellor and the cunning artificer and the eloquent orator, and I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them, and the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbour. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honourable. When a man shall take hold of his brother of the house of his father, saying, Thou has clothing, be thou our ruler, and let this ruin be under thy hand. In that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be an healer, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of the people, for Jerusalem is ruined, and Judah is fallen, because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord, to provoke the eyes of the the eyes of his glory, the show of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not, woe well unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Say ye to the righteous that it will be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Well unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him. That is, those who are not saved, those who are not children of God. The only way we can be righteous is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If we do not put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we will finish up going down to hell. And that's not God's purpose. He doesn't want you to go down to hell. He wants you to be in heaven. The only way to be in heaven is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance toward God. That is, a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner. And then put your faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. In whom we have redemption, through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Yes, it's either heaven or hell. What will it be for you? It's determined by what you do with our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you, and thanks for listening.
1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's basically the gospel in a nutshell. You and I have to realize that we're sinners in the sight of God. We need salvation. We need forgiveness for those sins. If we do not receive forgiveness for our sins, we will go down to hell at the moment of death, and God does not want that for any one of us. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repentance being a change of mind. Simply come to God and agree with him. Yes, I realize that I'm a sinner. Thy son has died for me upon the cross. Then all you simply need to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, after that he was seen of above five hundred brethren, or five hundred Christians at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some have fallen asleep. In other words, some have died, some have gone to heaven. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet or fit to be called an apostle because, here's the reason, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I laboured more abundantly than that they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believe. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, except he is useless. And your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found wit uh, false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. So you can see here very obviously that we've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to have forgiveness for our sins. We've got to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ to be at peace with God. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The only way of salvation is our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Do you have the Son of God? Have you believed on him for your eternal salvation? Then they which uh, are, sorry, then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now, is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept? For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God uh, to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. 
The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand uh, we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. What is that your attitude? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. That is the attitude of many people, probably most people in this world. It's a foolish attitude. It's very silly. Because what is going to happen is we're going to die and go down to hell because our sins have not been taken care of. Our sins have not been forgiven. They have not been washed away by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. In him we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened or made alive except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain, if may it may chance of wheat or of some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one, glo uh, one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead, it is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, was made a quickening spirit, or a life-giving spirit. You see, what we need to do, we need to understand that we need to be born again into God's family through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. This goes for everyone in the whole wide world. We need to have that new birth. We need to be born from above. Born into God's family. We are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, is the Lord from heaven. As is the earth earthy, such are, are they also that are earth, earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. This is speaking to Christians. That will apply to you if you're a child of God, if you're a Christian. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, 
neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of sin, uh, death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to understand that. The victory is found in a person. The same as salvation is found in a person, is the person of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labour is not in vain in the Lord. And again, it's speaking to Christians here. Christians should be known by their good works. It's not good works to get to heaven. It's good works as a result of their salvation. As a result of being born again into God's family, that the good works will be manifest in a child of God's life. And that's what God desires for you and for me if we're saved, if we're children of God. But I'm here to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ unto you, that you would be in heaven at the moment of death. And this is what God's desire is, that you would be in heaven at the moment of death. We cannot be there apart from faith in Jesus Christ. Without that faith in Christ, we're going down to hell. We're facing the judgment of Almighty God. That judgment will fall upon us without Christ. If we're without Christ, we're without God and without hope in this world, in this present evil world. You see, the majority of people are going down to hell, unfortunately. But God does not want that for you. God wants you to be in heaven. And that's why the Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. But is He your Saviour? You need to make Him your Saviour personally. It's a personal responsibility before the God of heaven. The Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God, yet God will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. The truth is found in the Bible, the Word of God. It's also found in a person our Lord Jesus Christ. Come to the one who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. What have you come in repentance and faith? Have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ for your eternal salvation? There will never ever be anyone in heaven apart from faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. How about it? This afternoon you can get right with God. Your soul can be saved as a result of faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Repentance toward God. That is a change of mind. Simply be honest before the God of heaven. Agree with God that you are a sinner. And then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. He was buried. But praise God, the third day he rose again according to the scripture. Is your soul saved? Should you happen to die right now, where would you be? Heaven through faith in Christ, or down in hell because you've rejected or neglected the Lord Jesus Christ who desires this afternoon to be your saviour. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. And thanks for listening. Remember, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord.